Hey guys, <clears throat> Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training. <clears throat> On a beautiful day after the rain with Joker here. I want to do uh, kind of have a special yak session. You guys usually hear me talking about my yak session. I take off on the road and head out to work dogs on the weekend. I go to trials, go to do a bunch of things, whatever it may be. Go work with different decoys. Stay busy doing bite work and doing my thing. So this weekend, this last weekend, I told you we had a few trials in town. We had the PhD canine trial and the uh, NADF trial that we had. Um, it was interesting to say the least we had a little bit of an emotional blowout i guess that's the best way of saying it, an emotional blowout towards the end and in in my perspective and that's where i'm coming from is my perspective uh, i've been sitting in the seat and doing my thing and i put a bh on a dog i've done some other things in the trialing and stuff and i but i haven't made it something that's my lifestyle to go out and compete you know i'd rather stay on the bench and not have to get into all the rigmarole because of a lot of different reasons i won't go into it today joker get over there Hup. Couché. Good boy. He's Mr. Sniff Sniff. All right, go free hunt. Go on, get out of here. Go on, go play. Get. So um, we were watching the trial, and everybody's getting on the second day, so we're getting to the more advanced dogs. And um, I won't mention names. Those who were out there saw this happen. They were there, and they, they saw this emotional puking. <laughs> That's what I, all I can say. Um, and from my perspective, I was sitting on the bench, and I was sitting there talking about what's going on in the field you know people are human they're going to talk you know and it wasn't any negativity mentioned about any individual there wasn't you know bad mouthing anybody that was just talking about what was going on in the field and this individual was out doing his thing and it was a kind of a complicated uh scenario that they had they had two or three decoys and they were doing a more advanced type of a thing they had one decoy that was doing a, a bite in front of the handler Hey, hey, you know, getting the dog's attention, boom, send the dog. There was a, the blind over off to the right-hand side of that. And as the dog went in to hit, there was a decoy that was hiding behind that blind. And I could have swore I, I heard the gentleman make a noise, whatever. It wasn't really distinct, you know, waving of hands or anything, but just enough that the dog could get the idea that there was a decoy in that blind. And he took his, his bite. Come off the bite, it's supposed to come to a recall, and, and the dog, this individual dog, and, and a lot of dogs did the same thing. It was a challenging scenario. It was something that would challenge the dog's proficiency in its control and in the obedience and in the aspect of the bite work, right? So the dog came off the bite and went after the decoy in the second blind. Then the handler called him back, and the decoy actually went towards the group of uh, judges and things, and um, it didn't look too good. He did; get, he was able to call his dog back, and so it was kind of a cluster. Okay, so here's my point of view and what I wanted to do this video about. In a general overall sense, when we train dogs, we build behaviors. We break them down to small little pieces, and we build behaviors. That's training. Okay, you can do all kinds of things to manipulate. Does you have a, a wide range of, of tricks in your bag? There's all kinds of things you can do to train a dog. I'll give you a good example a blind. They want in the IGP, they want the dog to go in nice and straight and be centered on the decoy. A lot of dogs will be off to the right or the left. They just take a chair or some kind of blocker, stick it to the left, stick it to the right. The dog doesn't have an option. He goes around that and he gets more centered on the on the dec on the decoy, right within the blind. It creates a behavior. At, over time, that behavior becomes established, and the dog goes to the center of the decoy. That's training, right? We have that ability to do that. Build, create behaviors, build behaviors, solve problems. That's what training is all, all about. On trial day. It's going out and it's testing your training and you are adhered to the criteria of whatever sport, whatever you're trying to do. You have a judge out there judging the criteria of the sport. You got to follow the rules. You're going out there and you, if you have a bad day, things happen. Or if you haven't prepared well enough, if you haven't done the training well enough, I'm not going to say that's what happened. I'm not trying to get to that point, but I'm just trying to say mental attitude. When on those days of, of trial, Let's say as a hypothetical, I go and I've, I've got to do a, a right about turn. I come back and I'm supposed to do a stand on the walk or a sit on the walk. And I'm, that was required in, in their routines yesterday. And so I think it was a sit on the walk and a lot of dogs blew it off. They went into a stand. They didn't do a down, whatever it was. Get to the end, you turn around and your dog's not in the right position. 
take it on the chin. There's nothing you can really do about it. It's not training and, and you lose those points and that's just the way it goes. Okay. This individual wanted to stay out there and keep doing this. And by the rules of the book, I guess I haven't got into the rules of NADF, so I don't know, but bottom line, the handler went and did this again and again. And now he's out there yelling, no, his dog's biting the bad decoy. And he's, it's not a training day. It's a trial day. So all this person did is end up embarrassing themselves. People are anxious on the, I mean, I was anxious. His wife was there and got upset. She got anxious. And so bottom line, it's not my fault because I'm sitting here talking about this and I'm, and I'm affected by what's going on in the field. That's human nature. That's going to happen. Nobody said anything negative about this individual as an individual. We were talking about the training and why is this happening? What's going on? Trying to figure out the routine, you know, and it was a challenge. There was one, uh, aspect of it that the dog had to do a uh escort from 20 30 feet away the handler was this way and he had to yell out escort and the dog had to be escorted uh, the, the decoy was supposed to be escorted up the field as he came towards the handler that's hard if you've ever ne ever done anything like this it's easy for me to grab a guy by the shoulder and have him right here and have that condition to the animal and have built that behavior but to try to get that to stick when the dog's in drives and all this stuff from a distance that's hard you know, you've got to really be on your toes and really have conditioned and built those behaviors so you're really secure so that on trail, trial day it goes well. And if it doesn't, take it on the chin and walk off the field. This individual didn't want to do that. He wanted, and he kept trying. And his excuse when we got to talk and afterwards, after a big old blowout, was... Then he had a young dog, a good dog. He wanted to have the dog see all kinds of pictures. That's what you do on training, okay? You don't do it on trial day. On trial day, you take your lumps and you walk off the field. I have a good friend of mine that's very high up in the IGP sport, and he does real good. And he was out one day, and his dog just did a brain fart. He's going after the dumbbell. The dog's supposed to be coming back to a front. The dog went to his ass, had the dumbbell perfect. But it wasn't a front, it was an ass he was looking at. And he realized what happened. He turned around and just took it on the chin. And everybody respected the hell out of him because he didn't get emotionally upset. He, he, it affected him. Believe me, you're out there. You work real hard on to get out there on trial day. And you want to have success. You, you're out to get the trophies and to get the ribbons. But sometimes things just don't happen that way. So there's my point of view from my perspective on the bench, okay? And, and maybe I'm out of my line, lane when I get into these subjects because I haven't been out there trialing. It's not easy. There's a lot of emotions. There was another, uh, another guy out there yesterday that I have a lot of world of respect. He was in the runner-up. His numbers were way high. I won't mention names because I didn't mention any of the names on this other individual. We're just talking hypothetical general generalities, right? So <clears throat> the other individual was very high up on the second day. He was looking to be neck and neck with another individual to possibly take the high points or to be first or second in the trial. Okay. And his dog did the same thing on that high scenario. And he went over and he bit the, he sent him to go to hit this decoy and he went in the blind. How many times does dogs in our sport and when we're trying to build behaviors, we work with blinds all the time. And so the blind is there and the dog just gets in and he flat and boom, he went to the blind and bit. He got DQ'd because he bit the wrong DQ, wrong, wrong decoy. Okay. He took it on the chin. He said he, in his mind, he's, and he actually stated, I'll work harder the next time and I'll work real hard to make sure these things don't happen the next time. That's what trial is all about. Trial is the true testament, okay, of you having your shit together, right, and having really good training. And, and you do your best and you got everything wrapped up in it and emotionally you're really out there and you want to win, but don't make yourself look bad by doing something like that and blowing up and get all upset on the field. Take it on the chin and be a bigger man than that, right, or a woman for that matter, you know. Another thing I wanted to talk about is in general. For all you guys that are beginning, remember, 30 years sitting on the bench and seeing a lot of stuff going on around me, I'm a, I'm a people person. I mean, I'm, I'm a peaceable wa watcher. I'm watching, I'm, I'm observing how you treat your animal. I'm just a spectator, right? But this is my mental attitude. I see how you treat your animal when you're out there during the day, what you do, how many times you break it. I might look and I do. For those that I really respect and admire, I watch them all the time. Now, there was one individual that came out towards the end that was one of the high high people on the, the podium. He might've even won. I don't know what the scores were yet, but I was really admired the heck out of him. One, he was very conscientious and aware of making sure his dog was in the shade. When he put him on deck, the dogs were laid down in the shade and most people did that. But for the general sense, some people forget and they get out there and they put the dog on a down. He's not even in the shade. He's sitting out there big. It's a long day. It's a long day for everybody, right? So, um, 
This individual, though, it, I, I looked at it and I went, you know, I caught it. You know, he, see, we, people see, the judges see, people see. This is your reputation out there and how you treat your animal and how you go through a day with dealing with a lot of stress and dealing with a lot of people and everything. It matters, right? It's going to be the telling factor of what your character is looked at from the outside of the fishbowl from other people. This individual that had the blowout yesterday made himself look real bad by getting upset to that point and blowing up, right? It, it only reflects on him. Okay, so, and things happen, and I understand that. But back to this individual that I had a lot of respect for. He started to go on to the field to do that higher um, number two or whatever it was, the, the second level, not the three, but the twos. And he was facing the same thing, and his dog kicked ass and took names. But when he came on the field, he, he was just getting ready to start. He had a bottle of water, he took a drink, and he gave his daughter, his dog a drink as well, right? I was the only person out there that whole day that I saw thinking about his dog the whole way when he was doing his thing. Very admirable, very, a lot of respect. A lot of kudos go to that individual, right? And maybe somebody caught it, maybe somebody didn't. I won't mention names. I'm trying to be fair here, so I'm not going to be given any names of anything. But those who were out there saw this happen and they know what happened. And again, the person that had the blowout, it's only a reflection on you, okay? And I know you're upset. I know you, you, know, you wanted the best for your dog, but on trial day, is not, it's not training. It's trial day. It's the day that you just take it on the chin, walk away and try to do a better job with your training. So the next time you come to a trial, you're pre better prepared. That's all you can do, right? So my two cents worth about a half a penny in today's world. You guys have a good day. Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, signing off. Have a good day, guys.